Hello and welcome back to another Flora and the Novice Explorers video. Many of you will know we're not travelling anymore. Our adventure came to an end in August. So we are back home in the UK, in England, Shropshire to be more specific, where we are on lockdown. And it gives us an opportunity to save some money to put into the piggy bank for our next adventure and sort of catch up with our vlogs and videos because it's been a bit of a break for us. We had probably about two months of not possibly even three possibly which we feel a bit guilty about we've had a lot of questions sent in by you you want to know what we're up to and what the future holds for flora and the novice explorers and uh, in this video that's what we're going to cover it's not a QA as such we're just taking the opportunity to update you guys and sort of talk about our real thoughts and feelings now that our first adventure has come to an end and how we've readjusted back to well normal life as it were uh, we're currently on a dog walk in the spooky woods up near the Long Mind, near our home. We'll try our best not to make this video too sad and depressing, um, despite the setting we find ourselves in at the moment. This would have done well for a Halloween special. Oh, it would have, yes. Uh, but we missed the boat on that one. Maybe next year. And one thing we always like to do and to put out into the world is the realities of van life and what, what it's really like when the adventure ends. Yeah, we've definitely shared a lot of our best moments, that's yeah. for sure. Um, so yeah, I think it's just good to level the playing field a bit and just talk about what's going on at the moment. So for the rest of this video, I don't think we're going to be sat on this log because it's a little damp and we're getting dripped on. So I think it's time that we head back down the road, back to the warm confines of our little caravan. So we're now back in the cosy caravan, the fire's lit and it is really lovely and warm in here and just the ambiance of the room is just, oh! And it's a particularly grim day actually, a uh, lot of rain now, the caravan's been battered by the wind but it's so nice being inside here. Um, we know a few of you have actually asked for a tour which we are planning to do but Meg wants to do it when it's a bit more Christmassy. I want to make it all Christmassy and nice so uh, prepare for it in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so th this is where we are now. We've been here in sort of the Shropshire countryside for about three months. So what we're going to do in this video now is talk about our experience of coming home. Uh, the good bits and the bad bits because there's been plenty of both really. Some um, that were expected I'd say and some that caught me off guard a little bit. So we're just going to talk about I guess coming home and what happened since. So it was about three months ago. Yep, three months ago we've been back. Yep, um, obviously we returned to um, home very different to how we left it. It's amazing what can happen in such a short period of time. If someone had told us, oh, by, by the time you come back, um, you won't be able to see your family properly. Uh, you have to keep your distance. You have to wear a mask. Uh, there's a lot of things you can't do. We'd said, that's never going to happen. Not in this world. What film have you been watching? <laughs> so it's kind of um, put you in your place, I think when such an unexpected event like that can have such an impact. Yeah, yeah. And that's where it sort of started for us, was coming home. Obviously, I was excited to come home. Yeah. I think you were too. Very much so. Um, we hadn't seen our, a lot of our friends and family for well over a year at this point. And so we were looking forward to that aspect of it. But obviously, as we said, with the uh, pandemic that was going on and still going on, seeing them wasn't quite what we expected. Yes, no. Obviously we knew that it was happening, but I think it took a long time for it to actually sink in about the social distancing, no contacts, so I mean no hugs, no kisses with family and friends that we hadn't seen for so long and like my grandparents there shielding mm. and we had to be really, really careful. Um, which I don't I just don't think we we'd thought that far ahead actually coming home. Probably not. The, the reality of it was very different, wasn't yeah. it? And it wasn't what we had intended 
Oh, well, of course not, yeah. Yeah, it was just a bit of an odd time, really. Um, but obviously it was the same for everybody. There was people desperate to see us, but we just couldn't. So it, it was all a very staggered process yeah. that was ongoing for quite a while. One thing we did which put our mind at ease was get COVID tests quite early on. Yeah, as soon as we got back, pretty much, put our minds at ease and so we could confidently do a little bit more than... Uh, Knowing that we hadn't brought it back with yeah. us was one of the concerns, because wasn't it? Especially where we live in such a like a tight-knit small community, be all them, them guys back from Sardinia Airport. <laughs> where are you from? <laughs> we wanted to be as safe and secure for um, our friends and families we could be in for ourselves and just do things as sensibly as we possibly could. We have managed to get away for a couple of weekends. Um, we didn't film any vlogs or any videos or anything. We kind of just needed to get away, decompress, and just generally sort our lives out and organise what we were doing with life, really. So we went to the Lake District, had a lovely uh, canoe session on Derwent Water. And then we also managed to get away to Mid Wales, where we just had no social media, no phone signal, <laughs> and did a little bit of wild camping. Yeah, it was really nice to sort of get back to real basics and decompress a little bit. This was obviously in the interim between lockdowns, yeah. um, so we were we were we okay were to do this to. at the time. But it's still obviously been very cautious, but we kept ourselves to ourselves. Yeah. So the little like weekend breaks, we had really good fun. But after a while, I did find that at least I felt like we were doing too much in regards to seeing people. You were organising a lot because mm. um, there's a lot of people to get around, a lot of things to do as well. Obviously, we've got to pick the threads of our life back up, which is a lot of work. And after a while, I just said, I asked you to just stop. Yeah. It was a little bit much. I understood exactly where you were coming from, though. But like, I just we had such a jam-packed schedule of seeing people, doing things for ourselves, um, booking flooring for an MOT, and then getting into work again. It was like coming from living in the van, I don't think we really ever checked the time. The yeah. date was always a bit iffy. What day is it? I'm not sure. So we had all this time to ourselves. Yeah. So suddenly coming back to having every like day Something multiple to things to do, I found yeah. it a little bit much. And I know we had to do a lot of that stuff, but some of it could have waited. I just felt like I needed to sort of decompress and sort of slowly get back into the rhythm of things. Yeah. And this was a bit of a delayed reaction as well, wasn't it? It was mm. about two, two weeks later than when we actually got back home. So yeah. that was something that um, I don't think we'd seen ahead. No, no, I think the adrenaline and like, the excitement of coming home propel propelled that for quite a while mm. until it's all sort of like, right, I need to like, just chill out. <laughs> yeah. And just, yeah, just have some time for ourselves, I think. Yeah. Now on to jobs, and that's one thing we have been very lucky with. We have fallen into um, new jobs um, pretty easily. Um, I had an interview and applied and got the job whilst we were in Sardinia. And as for you, you are now working for my dad, mm -hmm. who we were both discussing the other day is particularly flexible and understands our lifestyle and our goals. Yeah, he's one of the few people really, I mean, as Meg said, really lucky to find full-time employment with him, but he also said, if you need time off to do your YouTube videos or whatever, do that sort of stuff. He knows we need to keep the ball rolling, so it's like, you can always ask. So, I mean, having that um, option and flexibility is really good, because a lot of people, they watch our videos, but they're not really, um, un I don't know, they don't understand, I don't know how to say it best. Mm. They understand what we're doing and what, what we've yeah. done. I think it's more about he sees how important it is to us. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not a big money earner. It's, it's not, I don't know, doing the YouTube and social media stuff doesn't really financially benefit us or do much for us really apart from interacting with all the people yeah. who follow the journey. But I think he, he, he would and wants us to pursue an alternative lifestyle instead of getting caught up in the rat race and and things like that so very lucky it was one of our concerns actually finding jobs because we knew that we'd be coming back to a very different UK and we knew that the jobs market was on its backside and people were still furloughed yeah I mean we're going to talk about good bits and bad bits yeah. throughout this video so we don't want to seem ungrateful because I know some people are in a very very tough oh, yeah, position definitely. at the moment and we've been very very fortunate which we know yeah um, we are privileged to have done what we've done and to come back and to just hit the ground running. Yeah, pick up where we left off. Which is brilliant, but also in terms of um, 
keeping up with our social media and stuff, working full time, I forgot how little time there is. There is time to do bits, but you've got to be really proactive and really uh, strike while the iron's hot, which sometimes we find hard when we just want to sit down and watch some Netflix. And that was a bit of a challenge. So there was definitely a lot of positive things about coming home, jobs, friends and family, getting back into the rhythm of life and sort of set setting ourselves up and looking forward to the next adventure. However, I found that coming home also came with quite a few negative side effects, I think. And the overwhelming feeling that the adventure was over. Yeah, had this like, I think there's multiple things really going on. Um, we came home and like we said, hit the ground running. So the YouTube pretty much stopped. We stopped Instagram, Facebook, and interacting with a lot of people that we've sort of formed these online friendships with, which felt bad. Mm. So it felt like all the YouTube work we'd put in and all the um, meaningful interactions with other people just stopped. And it felt like that period's over, it's done with. And I think it, that was a little bit of, um, I don't know, a little bit of an unexpected thing because I didn't think we would do that. Yeah. And um, it's one thing that I don't think we would appreciate after following people for however long you guys have been following us that yeah. the adventure's over, that's it. Yeah. The door's shut to the YouTube. They're not posted on social media. What's happened? They've shared their life up to this point. Now what's going on on now? So I, I particularly found myself in a big like trough, I would call it. Yeah. Just a little bit of a blue mood, but it went on for quite a little while. Um, to the point where I never, I didn't pick up the camera, I didn't open our editing software, I, I really didn't even want to like look at our footage or yeah. do anything like YouTube related, which is very peculiar after doing it uh, flat out for about a year. And enjoying it so much because yeah. it's definitely one of your passions. Yeah, definitely, which is very strange. Um, I just found I had no motivation for it mm. at all. And no inspiration either coming home and it was pretty miserable yeah. weather and stuff like that because it's the UK. Which it did, I, and I did find myself even feel, feeling guilty for feeling a bit down about it all because we've had this amazing experience that a lot of you have seen. I mean, we couldn't have had a better year. So I felt bad for feeling bad. But like you and some of our friends said, because I know obviously that was we alluded to earlier, a lot of people in a way worse position than we are. Way worse. Yeah. But you know, you and some friends said just because other people are also in, like worse, worse off worse off it doesn't mean that you can't be sort of i'm well, not sad but you can't be sort of blue about your situation yeah. because it just it wasn't like a conscious thought obviously i just sort of like took a bit of a mood dip for yeah. a while and i think it's important that we share things like this because yes we're dreaming about the next adventure mm. but to really put across what it's like to go away for a year then come back to normality it was it felt very separate the adventure yeah. And sometimes in the early days, it felt as if it was a dream. We got back and it was like, did that actually happen? Um, That's why it's good to have the videos and stuff. Yeah. But then we also had jealous, we were jealous of our previous selves. Previous selves and even probably our peers and people that are either hitting the road or still on the road. We found ourselves having a bit of jealousy because we're like, ah. Oh big time I'm really sorry for all of yeah. the content that we put out during like <laughs> lockdown and after we found ourselves in a very fortunate position still being able to be out there but like w the green-eyed monster comes out in me more so I think than you like I've really struggled to watch yeah. any van life content <laughs> at the moment because I'm not doing it no one else can you were jealous and I was just moody so it's just this like uh, awful we were getting on all right but yeah I know you were trying to motivate me sometimes like I think the last well the first video I think when we did when we got home was our Omnia oven video yeah. which we wanted to do we were under you know it wasn't a sponsored video it was under our own steam mm. but I think that one didn't come across as it felt a little bit more like a chore, which yeah. also didn't help the mood. We wanted to do it, we filmed it, it came out well, I'm happy with it, but I didn't enjoy it yeah. as much as we... And I think you, if you re-watch that, not it's... saying that you should, but yeah. you can actually tell the vibe's not there, we're not particularly that upbeat, and no. I think in the comments as well, people have said how serious <laughs> yeah. we are and, and I think weren't like... feeling it. But going back, about having the green eyed monster and stuff. I think a year or 13 months, however long we want, was just long enough for it to be like a substantial part of your life. Oh, yeah. Where it became this lifestyle. It wasn't just traveling in the van, it was this whole. That was just life. 
mm. in that van, seeing new stuff every day. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? You know, especially as we ended up in Sardinia and like beautiful areas of France. It was just such a amazing way to end the trip, which kind of made like coming home a bit of, um, as much as I love being home, I'll probably live around here for the rest of my life, really. I love being here, but I also want to see the world. So yeah, it's just this weird like period of being a bit, uh, glum, a bit um, guilty about feeling that way and then, I don't know, the next adventure seems so far away. And uncertain. And uncertain, obviously, there's a lot going on. So it's just a bit of a weird time. I never want to sound ungrateful because obviously who wouldn't want to be travelling around in the van, going snorkelling, climbing mountains and all that kind of thing. It's very much a first world problem having to come back. So now onto the money situation. Um, we are spending a lot more than we thought we would coming home. Two to three times more than our van life budget per month. And yeah, this isn't um, treating ourselves or doing anything particularly flash. I think it's literally getting us back to square one. Yeah. Um, I was particularly um, short-sighted when we left for our adventure. I sold what little furniture I had and little bits and bobs that I thought I'd never need. Come back and obviously I've rebought most of that furniture, not the same stuff, but to replace it. Yeah, um, so that's costing money. Yep. We have purchased a second vehicle so that we aren't putting willy-nilly miles on Flora. And so you've got the second car to commute mm. to the job. <laughs> we did have a wonderful idea whilst in Sardinia that we get like a Vespa or 125 scooter, twist and go, whatever. But that was very much a Sardinian dream with the beautiful weather there. Came back home and was like, no, that's, that's not going to happen because <laughs> wherever you go, you'd be soaking wet. Yes. Coming home as well, Flora's been in for an MOT and she's had some maintenance done, which again has not particularly been cheap, around £600. Yeah, that included a couple new tyres and our mechanic actually said one of the rear tyres that was on the van had a big gash in it and he said it probably wasn't... In the tread, we, didn't, we couldn't see it, yeah, there's he... no way we would have been able to see it. And he said it probably wasn't a million miles off from potentially going bang, so that could have been a very... Uh... Stressful. Well, dangerous. Dangerous, yeah, dangerous. Um, yeah, so, I mean, touch wood. <laughs> we did make it back in one yeah. piece, so that's one thing. Yeah, it was a bit of kicking the ghoulies, paying that mechanics bill, because that's a lot of money. But, you know, we spent quite a lot of money on the van over the years, but I think I've never had such a good return on that investment. I think we're really getting our money's worth. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, yes, it's cost us a lot, we don't earn that much money, so it's cost a big percentage of what we've earned and stuff over the years. But looking back to the adventure we had and looking forward to future ones, it, it's it's worth every penny for maintaining it. Yes, So, indeed. Well, any little work it, she needs, we do pay for it because it's just going to yeah. maintain If we haven't got the van, we haven't got the YouTube channel. No. Flora and the Novice Explorers. Flora and the stationary car caravan.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> if you say so. So that brings us on to future adventures. So there's no plans as such, even though no. you're a planner. Because Just dreams and ideas, I said the other day. We've got dreams and ideas. Yeah, there are loads of things you want to do. Um, obviously, money's a factor, COVID, Brexit. A lot of uncertainty at the minute. Mm. Um, we'd love to do a little adventure next year. Yeah. Not so, not so big as this one past um, because like we said, we're not really in the position to do that. No, um, the piggy bank is slowly topping back up again, but there's so many things that we need to sort out beforehand that it's next year's thing to think about, really, the next adventure. We don't want to give too many hints or um, uh, Let's say spoilers. Sure. Yeah. We don't say, yeah, we're doing this because as the last few months have taught us, nothing's guaranteed. Guaranteed. At the moment, is it? No. You know, we know things can change like that, so. One thing that we are putting into motion is some flora upgrades in the new year. We've sent a few emails off about that, so that's something to stay tuned for. And we've got some cool things coming up over the lockdown as well. Yeah, hopefully we're hoping to do a few more live streams. Uh, we've got a, a quite a cool idea. We just need to technically pull it off. Yeah. Um, so we won't 
say too much until we know that we can do it. And we also want to do our live quiz, which I think we've mentioned before. We're just trying to figure out the logistics of how we're going to make that work. So if anyone knows of, knows of any really easy software, maybe over Skype or Zoom, so like there's minimal instructions for people to follow and so people can't cheat, um, or we don't have the fiasco like the stickers. Yeah. yeah. If anyone knows. It could you have been like a program so that everyone fills in the answer at the same time and sends it? Yeah. And then it's like, they've got it right, they've got it wrong. Yeah. Because there's going to be big prizes on the line. Yeah, we've got some, well, we say cool stuff. We think it's quite cool. <laughs> I'm sure long-term viewers of the channel will think so too. It's just going to be a bit of fun, really. Um, bit of lockdown entertainment. Yeah, just maybe like once a week, a live stream of various sorts, just for a bit of fun, yeah. yeah. Nothing too serious at all. But we know last time everyone fell out about the stickers, <laughs> which was our, our fault. <laughs> So now to type the video, I think it's important to say that uh, we're both in a positive mindset and productivity uh, mindset. <laughs> if that's the right way of putting it, I think we're both ready to feel productive. Yeah, get some more content out. We are now reviewing our footage and everything that we've seen and done over the last few months. We're gonna... that's, that's nice actually. Now we can we no, can we cope can with seeing our. our previous selves having lots of fun <laughs> so hopefully there'll be more content in the way of that um sort of uh, little recaps little highlights and stuff like that and make it interesting and entertaining for you guys to watch hopefully yeah um and we feel as if this video might have been a bit of a downer vid a little bit well i mean there's good bits and bad bits yeah but we i think this whole process and what we've been through what the past night nearly a year and a half, 18 months, is that it's really cemented our desire um, to carry on with exploring the world and, and going away in our van and things like that. And uh, it's all we ever really want to do now, I think. There's a lot of world out there to explore and we didn't even go that far. <laughs> it just made us realise that there is still plenty to do and see in the way we want to continue living our lives really so that is it from us today thank you very much for watching and bearing with us i'm sorry that it's taken us so long to really keep you up to date with what's been going on if it's not actually what's happening on the ground and in our heads as well yeah, because obviously we know what we've been up to the last few months, but we haven't been sharing any of it so far. I love it's been really boring, to be quite frank, so <laughs> you haven't missed out on anything. Well, that's true. Boring and goddamn depressing. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want any more depressing videos, make sure you subscribe. Press the little bell icon to receive notifications each time we upload a video. We will try and make it happier next time, I promise. And follow us on the social medias where you will see what's happening with her. Ooh with snoring dog over there and anything that we get up to before we post this next video. Yeah. Oh, I've got sod in here blogs coming next week, everyone. I've managed to do what I said I was going to do. So we will see you in the next one. All those links will be down below in the video description, by the way, for social media. Forgot that bit. Peace out. Bye.